Hey everybody, it's Ginny. Um, I'm here with my month 15 post-op VSG update. I can't believe it's been 15 months. That's just an insane amount of time. So it's been about five weeks since um, I last did a video. Nobody complained about how long it was between my last two videos, so um, I figured you guys were okay with a little more sporadic posting. But the good thing is I have lots to update you on, so I have lots to say. Um, let me just show you my necklace. I posted this on Facebook, but um, it says anything is possible. I got it in um, Hawaii at the Biodoan Temple, and um, I love it because I'm really starting to believe that anything is possible in my life, which is just wonderful. Um, okay, so I'm going to start with the weight update. Um, if I did the math right, I've lost about 12 pounds since I last talked to you five weeks ago. Um, I'm only... Um, I'm, I'm at 262 now, so 12 pounds off of my goal weight of 250, so very close. Um, I, um, my husband and I ordered a, a little goal gift for me, something that I needed, but um, I'll share it with you when I make it there. Um, and let's see, yeah, I, I would be very excited to, to maybe be there the next time I talk to you, but I don't know. Um, as we all know, our bodies do what they want to do, whether we're doing everything right or not. Um, so we'll see. Um, okay, so, oh, and also since I've last talked to you, there have been changes in my measurements. Um, so my hips, um, the last time... Okay, sorry, uh, just doing the math in my head. So my hips the last time I talked to you were 66 inches. They're now 60.5 inches. That was by far the biggest drop that I saw um, over the last five weeks. That's a five and a half, half inch drop. That's crazy. Um, and let's see, my upper belly... Uh, I saw, I've seen an inch and a half drop in that. My bust, I've actually seen a one inch drop in that total. Um, it was a two inch drop, but I got a better bra and now it's only a one inch drop. So that's gone from 46 to 44 and now back up to 45. Um, my right thigh was 30 and a quarter inches and is now 29 inches so one and a quarter inches like I said most of it came off my hips um, and my right calf has stayed the same um, but the exciting thing is I've um, needed new compression stockings um, for a very long time and now I can buy out-of-the-box ones I don't have to have them custom made they don't fit perfectly out of the box, but they do fit. And so I've taken to wearing them for a couple hours here and there just to get a little compression on my legs. And I can actually see a visible difference. So I know it's helping. It's it's good for them. Um, yeah. So those are my measurements. i um, very excited about the hips. It's just insane. Um, and we did recently go clothing shopping um, for some winter clothes. Like we bought some clothes in Hawaii. We got some good basics. But I didn't have really many pairs of pants. I didn't have any, like, sweaters or jumpers or whatever you call them in the country you live in. Um, <laughs> so we went shopping. We got some on sale, which was lovely. I didn't ask for your opinion. I'm making a video here. Do you like sweaters? Say hello, little kitty. Yes. Oh, such a fuzzball. Okay, go on. Um, she's a mess. <laughs> but yeah, but I bought some jeans. I went to City Chic, which is a, a clothing chain here, a plus size clothing chain. And the lady was like, I was like, oh, I need some jeans. And um, I saw they had some high waisted ones. <laughs> which Andrew calls them my mom jeans, but my problem is with my shape right now, they gape at the waist really badly, regardless of if they're the correct size or not. And high-waisted ones give me a little more room with that, and I'm not showing my underwear to everybody, which is the end goal. Um, so 
um, I was like, oh, well, what sizes do you have? She said, oh, well, we only go up to 22 in this store, which an Aussie 22, um, to the best of my knowledge, is like a U.S. 18. So I was like, there's no way. But she's like, here, here, just try them on. So I go in the room, and I, I go in the fitting room, and I'm taking these little tiny jeans in. I'm like, there's no way. They were, I should say, they're stretch denim. They're not regular denim. Um, but... I was still unbelievably shocked when they fit me. Um, I, I did not think that I could wear 18, size 18 pants right now, stretch or not. I mean, yeah, shocked. <laughs> so very happy about that. And I think it's insane, but I'm, I'm super happy about it. Um, okay. Let's see. I was going to give you an update. Oh, um, I start a new job soon. It's just a six week contract. It's not a, not a, um, not a permanent job, but it can be renewed if they like what I'm doing. So we'll see. Um, uh, it'll be lovely to have, this is my first sort of nine to five desk gig. I've done some freelance, um, work, uh, since I had surgery, but not really a nine to five desk job. So I'm looking forward to getting back into that. Um, yeah, so how I've been eating, I have, like I told you in my last video, I've been trying to incorporate more carbs, healthy carbs, and I had in my mind that I was going to stick to low GI carbs, and then I did not do what I should have done before I went grocery shopping, and that is refresh my mind on what low GI carbs are. I was looking at whole grain things, and I was looking for lower carb whole grain items, and I picked up a box of low sugar granola. Not low GI. I mean, I'm sure most of you out there are going, duh, it's granola. But it was low sugar granola. The carbs were less and it was it was a high protein cereal. So I thought this might be a good option. No. For three days, I had the most insane carb and sugar cravings that I have had since I had surgery. Um, it was over the top. All I thought about all day long was eating. All I wanted to eat was carby food. I didn't want to eat protein all day long. And it took me a few days to go, maybe it's that granola. Duh. So I cut out the, the granola and magically they stopped. And it just, it really exemplified for me how much eating lower carb, not super low, but lower carb, low GI um, items really makes a difference in my cravings. I mean, it's huge. And I hope that those of you really struggling with eating the wrong things, if you haven't tried lowering your carb count, and I'm sure you have, that's probably something that all of us do, but I realize it's hard to, it's definitely hard to live on a keto diet with your carbs that low. I get that. Um, but I've been doing 70 net and I seem to be okay. So, um, yeah, anyway, so I hope that, that, those of you struggling, try that if you haven't already and that it works for you. Um, exercise, I was doing really well with for a while and then I've lost all motivation for it and it really frustrates me. I'm still going to see my exercise physio every week, um, but I am not doing my workouts between at really at all the last couple of weeks and I'm definitely beating myself up about it, which is not helping. Um, but I, I don't know why. At first I thought it was I didn't have the energy from keto. And like I've had all these different theories around why. But I just, I need to find that motivation again. I tried bribing myself. That didn't work. Um, so if if you guys also struggle with it and you've gotten yourself from a demotivated place back to being motivated, if you have any tips, please leave them in the comments. I could really use them. I really want to get back to that. Um, I think also what's making it hard for me to find the motivation is that I've been losing weight faster since I stopped working out. So I think being so close to goal, like I don't want to do anything to delay it or prolong it, which is like, I don't know. Like it's, it's not a conscious decision that I'm making. I'm not intentionally doing that, but... Um, obviously I want to lose weight for health reasons and part of fitness is working out, but, um, my exercise physio and I've had two over the last couple of weeks cause my old one left and I've got a new one. Um, both of them have made comments about my cardiovascular fitness, like how amazed they are by it. Um, 
when I'm on the cross trainer and I'm doing bursts where I'm going really hard um, and then taking like a minute off and then going really hard for two minutes and taking a minute off. Um, my heart rate goes up to like 170 ish and then drops all the way or, or 180 and then drops back down to the 140s in like 30 seconds. So they say that I'm very cardiovascularly fit and they have clients who are like gym rats who aren't anywhere near cardiovascularly fit to the level that I am. So I'm super happy about that. Obviously, all the workouts I've done prior to this have paid off for me in spades. Um, but I really need to get back to it. So yeah, any tips you guys have, please share them. Um, let's see. How I'm eating right now, um, I kind of told you a list of things I wanted to talk about, wanted to talk about in this video. Um, 70 grams of carbs, 80 plus grams of protein, still 1,200 calories, um, and not limiting fat. So very similar. I just bumped the carbs up a little, and I'm really trying to focus on getting more fiber in. Um, but it's hard to kind of keep your carbs down while raising your fiber. But I have found some ideas. I'm going to be eating more avocado, for example. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just going to try to find sort of natural ways to incorporate more fiber without incorporating too many more carbs. Um, how things are going on the gurgling front. You guys may remember that I have a gurgling in my esophagus um, after I eat, sometimes after I drink, when I lie down at night. Um, and I had gone to get a gastroscopy with my surgeon in Melbourne, who's, as you guys know, if you watch these videos, the best in the country. He's amazing um, for bariatric surgery. And he said, I don't see a stricture. I don't see anything wrong with you. Um, you know, I think you have, um, I think you just have candida in your esophagus, which he gave me um, medication for that, which I took. It's fine. Um, and I think you might have H. pylori, but I'm not sure we're going to test that. And then he told me to call his office back a week later. Um, they were like, oh, we can't find your test call back in another week. And he had given me a script for the antibiotics I needed just in case the H. pylori test came back positive. Um, and they finally got back to me and were like, we don't have your test. The hospital doesn't have your, have your test. It's been lost. Um, take the medication anyway. So, like, just you know, pro pro prophylactically, take, take it in case you have H. pylori. So I go and get it filled, and I get the medication filled, and I get it home, and I look at it, and I'm like, I'm allergic to penicillin. This is two different forms of penicillin. Um, it's all over my chart. I've been allergic to it since I was a child. Um, and my husband was like, well, look, we wanted to get you retested for your penicillin allergy anyway, because sometimes people outgrow it, so go get retested. So I go and I get an allergy test. Well, it turns out that I'm not allergic to penicillin anymore. This is a drawn out story. I'm sorry. Um, turns out that I'm not allergic to penicillin anymore. Great. I can take the medication, but like, um, but the doctor that did the allergy test said, you know, the first time you take penicillin, you know, you, you don't know what's going to happen when you take it. So only take it if you really need it. So I was going to see my endocrinologist the next day and I told her what was going on with that. And she's like, look, what your surgeon said about you having candida and H. pylori and that causing your symptoms didn't sound right to me, but I'm not a, I'm not like, I'm not a bariatric surgeon. But I went to school with this guy who's one of the top bariatric surgeons in Sydney, and look, I can refer you to him if you like for a second opinion. Well, I was afraid to do that because the guy that I saw in Melbourne, like I said, he's one of the best in the country, if not the best bariatric surgeon in the country, and he's also like the only one who is good enough to do the DS, who's vetted, who you know people have heard of, who's done enough of them that I would consider letting him do a DS. And as you guys know, that's the surgery that I originally wanted. And I thought I was going to have to be revised too. I didn't think I was ever going to get below 350 pounds with just a sleeve. I was told that wasn't possible. Um, so, yeah, well, now I don't know that I'm going to have to have the DS down the road. I might. But now it's looking like maybe I won't. So I said, well, we got to do what we got to do. We have to stop this gurgling. It's waking me up at night. Um, I don't like hanging out with people and hearing my esophagus gurgle, you know, when we're all sitting around talking like that's no. So, I mean, 
as complications go, it's pretty minor. But, um, you know, I, I don't want to deal with it anymore. So um, his office, he actually sat there with me and called my Melbourne, my, my Sydney surgeon. I got in to see him. Um, and he sat there with me while he called my Melbourne surgeon's office and asked for the op report. And they said they couldn't find it. And he asked for the gastroscopy report. And they said they couldn't find that either. And I'm just like, what is going on? I don't know if he eventually got that or not. He said that once I left, he would, you know, work on trying to get that some more, um, see if they could locate it. So I don't know if he's gotten that or not. Um, but we, d he did send me for a barium swallow and meal. And he sent me to a guy who specifically does a lot of these for bariatric patients, and they have a different kind of test they can do. So the guy keeps asking me the whole time they're doing this barium swallow on me, do you feel the gurgling now? Do you feel it? I'm like, no, I, I, like, I, I don't really feel it, and I usually hear it. It's audible generally. I, it's not really happening. And he kept asking me, and I thought, oh, man, he's not seeing anything. There's nothing going on, and they're going to be like, everything's fine with you, and we're not going to get an answer. And he then makes me swallow a barium-coated marshmallow. And he's asking me again, are you feeling the gurgling? I'm like, no. And so he finishes up. He has his assistant record what they're seeing on the, um, on the x-ray while they're doing the barium swallow. Like, you can actually watch the liquid going down. I couldn't, but they could. Watch the liquid going down. Watch the marshmallow go down. And after he was done, he goes... I couldn't believe that. And he like played it back for me. And he like, you could literally see the liquid that I drank just like it was going down my esophagus normally. And then it hit one spot and just reduced to this teeny tiny little trickle. And you could literally see me swallow the marshmallow. And then it hit this one spot and the marshmallow was sitting there. It wasn't going in, into my stomach. So, um, he, he apparently thinks that I have a stricture, a possible stricture, and a possible um, sliding hiatal hernia that is literally sliding the food back up my esophagus because it gets the spot where it's narrow is where the esophagus passes through my diaphragm. And he said it looks like the food is hitting that and it's sitting there. And then gradually my hiatal hernia is sliding it back up my esophagus and then it's falling back down and it's sliding back. It literally just is doing that continuously. So obviously that's not what I want to hear, but the surgeon has to go in and actually look at it to confirm. So they're doing an endoscopy on me in about six weeks. Um, in the hospital, twilight sleep, not full anesthesia, um, supposedly, and it should be an easy fix if it's a stricture. Um, and the, his only concern is once he opens my esophagus back up, Am I suddenly going to start having more reflux because of that hiatal hernia? And that's something we won't know until he does it. I will not be able to eat more, um, according to him, because he's not expanding my sleeve at all. He's just expanding my esophagus where it's way too narrow. So according to him, this, this is not the reason that I've done so well losing weight, and it won't stop me from losing weight and finishing my journey. So that's what's going on with that. Um, yeah. So that's basically all the updates I have for this month. This has gone on way too long already, I'm sure. Yeah, 20 minutes. Typical for me. But um, I love you guys. Yes, we love you too, Kitty. <laughs> I love you guys. And um, if you have any questions or you need updates on anything else I forgot, just um, let me know and I'll make sure they get in the next video. Talk to you soon. Bye.